What's going on guys, Tyler here and welcome back to another video. Thank you for stopping by and if you're new to the channel, be sure and smash that nice red look and subscribe button. Join the family, be notified of upcoming videos just like this one. Now today we're talking about some speed improvements to your website. I got really good feedback on my last video about Elementor 3.1 and if you haven't seen that yet, click on that card up above and check it out. There is going to be an awesome, awesome feature in Elementor 3.1 that you won't want to miss. Now, because you guys were excited about that new 3.1 feature coming out about increasing website speeds, I thought it would be appropriate to show you some other tools that I use to increase website speeds. Now, this video will probably be pretty short, but it is packed with some value. So stay tuned for the whole thing and check out some of the resources I have in this video. All right, guys, now before we jump into my computer, I do want to mention Elementor Pro is a phenomenal plugin. It has so many different features that you can add into your website, like premium widgets or customizations that you can't normally do with Elementor and it makes things so much easier and there's everything just kind of built out for you that you can just drag and drop different widgets and parts of your site over to your website and create it just super, super easily. So I highly recommend it. I always suggest it to my friends. I have a link down below in the description. So check that out, see what kind of price you can get for it. As far as drag and drop plugin builders go, it's a really, really good price. So check out that link right down below there. Now let's go ahead and jump into my computer and get started. All right, guys. Now, if you missed last week's video, be sure and check that out. We went over this Elementor blog post about optimized asset loading mode. And just for a refresher, if you did see the video, it's all about loading certain parts of your website and not loading certain parts of your website. And it's, it's very, very important and it's not activated by default. So if you didn't see the video, be sure and go back and check that out. It's a very short video. It talks all about this feature and why it is a game changer for Elementor and websites running Elementor. So to kind of build on that video and this feature that is coming out for Elementor, I want to talk about two websites that I often use when I'm going through and diagnosing a website that is running slow, or even I'm just starting out building a website. I want to see kind of what I'm doing wrong, kind of what are the issues that are causing this website to load slow, or maybe just see if there's any kind of improvements I can make to this site so I can get a faster response time. All right, the first website I use is Byte Check, and that's Byte as in like a kill kilobyte or megabyte, B-Y-T-E, check.com. And right here, it's just very simple. It's going to test mostly the time to first byte, the TTFB, which is kind of like testing how quickly your server is responding. So your hosting, like if you have, you know, maybe slow hosting. Um, I had super slow hosting when I was on Bluehost and I was able to figure out what the issue was, figure out the issue was my hosting from running a test just like this. Now, if you're, if you're finding that your host is super slow, I do have a link to my preferred host. It is the most amazing host. And I don't say that lightly. It really is phenomenal. I've been with GoDaddy, HostGator, Bluehost, all, all the ones you can think of. And uh, switching over to this one was the best decision I've ever made as far as hosting goes. So check out that link if you're interested. But basically what you're going to see here is, well, let's just go ahead and run this test. I've put in my URL and we've got the results back just that fast here. You can see the time to first byte here, right here, the total amount of time it took to load the first byte of data was 11 milliseconds. That is crazy fast. So if you guys want to run this test and kind of see um, if you get a high TTFB, there's a good chance that is your hosting that is slowing things down um, because it's not even loading data from your website yet. Even if you have a chunky homepage, it's not even loading that yet. It's just measuring how fast it's getting back its first little tiny piece of data. So that is a very, very low TTFB, which is what we're looking for. The total load time of my site is under two milliseconds or 200 milliseconds. So we're looking at, you know, two tenths of a second. That's, that's, ridiculous. Um, I don't, I don't have a ton of content on my page, but for the content I do have, like that is 
ridiculously fast. So just so you know, this is a great, great response time. I got a five star rating, obviously. You can see kind of some more details here and see kind of how things loaded and things like this. This is a timeline of kind of the first thing that it did, the second thing that happened, the third thing, and going down kind of from left to right as well. You can measure out how long things took. Um, really, really good score. And I, I wish I could, you know, take full credit for this, but a lot of this comes from my hosting. They have things like, you know, SSD drives, um, CDNs, uh, server-side caching, like so many different features that really increase the speed. So um, check and see how this is. So primarily, I'm going to run this byte check test to test my hosting speed. I want to see, you know, how fast things are loading, how fast the, the host is responding. And then I'm going to go over to another website called GT Mac metrics excuse me gt metrics and this is a very common website for testing your site speed all right guys this is gt metrics and what you're going to do is put in right here your url so i'm just going to type in my website and this does take a little bit longer than the bite check website as you can see it's running and it, it's going to take a few maybe up to a minute or so um but it it goes through super in depth on everything that's happening with your website and this is awesome because i run this to see where I'm making mistakes and what I'm doing that I could be optimizing to be able to increase speeds. So you can see here it's loaded up my website, it's step three of four completed, and step four it's generating the report. And here we go, we now have a report of how quickly my website loaded. Now just to make things easy to read this report, right over here is your grade. It's a letter grade like in school. Um, an A is the highest you can get, so obviously I, I've got the highest grade um, report right there. Um, the performance is 95%, um, so that's pretty good. There is 5% maybe that I could still optimize. The structure of how my website is actually coded and created, 94%, um, so pretty dang good there. Um, and then let's see, the largest content full paint is one second. So right here, if you look down here, you can actually see this is like a timeline of what's actually happening. Um, you're looking at 0.2 seconds over here. It says the time to first byte was 350 milliseconds, so a little bit different than the byte check re result. Um, and that can vary a little bit, but it's best to kind of compare the same results on the same um, testing platform. So again, if I ran, if I went and made a whole bunch of changes to my site, I would kind of test on the same platform and compare the GT metrics results to the GT metrics results, you know, at a later point, if that makes sense. You don't really want to compare the two because they can be off a little bit. So TTFB, we're looking at 350 milliseconds right there. Um, first content full paint is about a second right here. Largest content full paint is about one second. So when actually things are kind of starting to load and get, you know, be published on this on the website for the uh, for the user when they're starting to see things um, time to interactive so when you can start interacting with my website is 1.7 seconds and the fully loaded time is two seconds so that's pretty dang good that that shows you you know everything is kind of ready to go and ready to be interacted with around 1.7 to 2 seconds that's a very fast load time um, and that's why I got this a rating here now right down here are the top issues and pretty much every Every website that I've ever made or had, you know, even taken over and ran tests on has had issues. So don't worry if there's issues. Um, they're usually low impact issues unless there's like something majorly wrong with the website. Um, they're usually not too big of an issue. Um, so right over here, I do want to show you they have an impact rating. So these right here eliminate render blocking resources. That's a low impact. So it's probably not going to affect your load time too much. Um, they have a potential savings of about a hundred milliseconds so if you really want to focus on that and get rid of that whatever it is you could go through and actually figure out what it is where it is in the code and get rid of it um, here this is something that does actually affect your website quite a bit and this will be something that probably pops up on yours as well um, properly sized images this is a medium to low impact right here if we click this drop down you can see there's a potential savings of 1182 kilobytes that's actually a good amount of data there that's being transferred so right here we can see these are all the images it's pulling from my home page right here so there are savings here um, right here let's just take um, yeah I don't know we'll just take this 
one right here. So this one right here, this second image here, it's 188 kilobytes. There's a potential savings of 178 kilobytes. Now you could kind of like reduce this image way down, make it, you know, super low quality, and it might reduce the size all the way up to 178 kilobytes but that might leave you with a very, very kind of low graphical image. So you kind of want to gauge like, how much can I reduce to how low of quality are the images actually going to be? Because you don't want them super low quality. Um, but basically, guys, this is how this website works. There's a lot of different information here. You can click performance and see there's these are the actual times that it took to do certain tasks. Um, there's different like browser timings here. So the connection duration, um, the back end duration, all these different things, time to first byte, all those things. Um, the structure, this is everything kind of listed out of how big of the impact it has on your um, website and kind of what the issues that it found were. Um, again, pretty dang good. And I'm running Elementor Pro on my website. I'm running on, I'm running WordPress, obviously. So two kind of chunkier um, pieces of software, but they're all going to be hopefully improved as soon as the Elementor 3.1 comes out and we can use that uh, optimized asset loading feature. That will be super nice. Real quick guys, I'm just editing this video sitting here on this window seal. But hey, I just wanted to say that if you're kind of a geek like me and wanna measure the difference between Elementor 3.1, that image, that uh, asset optimization feature, if you want to measure the difference between having it turned on and having it turned off, what you're gonna do is not run a byte check scan, you're actually gonna run a GT metrics scan and scan your website before you even turn the feature off once it comes out and you'll write down all the information, see how long the actual page load time is, not necessarily the time to first byte, but the full page load. And then what you're gonna do is go ahead and turn that feature on in your WordPress website, and then go back and run another GT metric scan, and you should get a different number if there's a significant change based on this new feature that Elementor is putting out. Now note, this isn't going to adjust or change the time to first byte scan because that's before Elementor is even loaded. So we need to see a total page load time and that's what should be different between the two scans. Here's a waterfall just for the last feature here. This is how everything loads in. So you can see kind of what took um, this amount of time you know if you find like there's one that really sticks out like maybe this one right here the let's see the tem sign black hq so my signature my logo right here took a lot more time to load it took 1.6 seconds 1.16 seconds to load so maybe i need to drop that quality down a little bit but yeah guys this is how gt metrics works this is how byte check works um they're great tools i often often use them i well for pretty much every website i've ever made i use them because um, they give you a great kind of starting point of where you need to improve load times on your website. And again, if it's a time to first byte issue, that could very well be your host and not really your fault. So check out that link to that host down below if you need to switch hosts or you're looking to upgrade your host. It really is a phenomenal host with so many cool features. But more on that in a later video. Um, guys, if you're interested in Elementor Pro, there is a link down below and you can check that out. And if you're, you know, ready to join Join the premium side of Elementor. You're going to be really impressed with all of their many widgets that they have. Um, thank you guys so much for watching today. If you haven't subscribed, consider tapping that nice red looking subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. It helps me to continue to make videos just like this. And again, if you're interested in the Elementor 3.1, my previous video is all about that. So check that out. All right, guys, thank you so much. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.